Andre Dees and 71 Noah Cavanaugh. Steven Ortiz in net for Flower City. They have three men making their debut. For the Bobcats, it goes number eight, Jocelyn Poseidon, the captain. Number 13, Khalid Balagun. Number 15, Richard Forca. 16, Davey Mason. 17, Elijah Amo. 19, Yaya Fane. 22, Drew Wivel. 24, Andy Alvarado. 23, Darwin Espinal. 32, Manny Gonzalez, and in goal, the Ghana International, number 12, Felix Anon. Bobcats going to be wearing their all-yellow home uniforms. The one big omission from this Maryland lineup is no Brandon Clegg starting. He had started every league match before this one, all 13. He is not in the starting lineup after three matches in seven days, just not 100% fit. He is available, though, off the bench. And I mean Ben. Three matches in seven days. You can't say it enough. These guys have to be tired, don't they? Yeah, and it's really hard to play that many games in, a spe in a, that short of a time because in a typical soccer game, you're just constantly running. And that's why I the rest period part of the game, kind of when the ball is away from you the other side, getting that rest is one of the most important facts of the game. You kind of got to conserve yourself for those potential runs down the field for a counterattack. You got to conserve your energy so you can be right at the right moment. You can't always be really going all out because so much running can body can only handle it so much. Thankfully, the weather today, not as hot as we've seen some of these games. It's a really nice night for soccer tonight, so that definitely should keep the energy a lot higher for some of these players. So, good soccer ahead of us. Yeah, and not just three matches in seven days. A cup final and then matches against the two top teams in the league. So, coming off that, Maryland looking for hopefully maybe a little bit of an easier match today against the bottom team in the league in Flower City Union who has a record of 2-2-13 two, two, and 13, and a goal differential that is by far the lowest in the league of the Bobcats beat them 6-1 the last time they played here. That goal differential is minus 33. And for Maryland, they're hoping to get back into the win column. They are 3-1-3 and three at home on the season. Bobcats managed by Sylvan Rostello in his first year with the club. Colton Bly at the helm of Flower City Union. He is the interim coach at just 27 years old. Bobcats going from right to left. Flower City Union left to right. Jocelyn Besai the captain for Maryland for Flower City Union. It's their goalkeeper, Stephen Ortiz, wearing the armband. The old Bay Brigade out in full force today. There was some question of how this Maryland defense was going to line up without Brandon Clegg. Looks like four in the back with Richard Forka and Yaya Fane as the center backs and Davey Mason and Drew Wivel as the full backs. Also no uh, Bernardo Mahano in the starting lineup with Andy Alvarado taking his spot. Here's Davey Mason. And Jocelyn Pisayan. This is his 14th start of the year, so he has started every match. No goals yet. One assist. He does have three yellow cards. Cleed Balagun trying to fight for it. The new signee to Maryland. Played in each of the last three matches, his first three matches of the season. Andy Alvarado, the local product of Watkins Mill High School over in Gaithersburg. Here's Manny Gonzalez, the native of Florida. Mason again, another local player, also Montgomery County High School product. He went to Walt Whitman. A one two between Espinal and Pisayan. It's now Drew Wiffle. And Elijah Amo. For Drew Wiffle, this is just his third start of the season, his eighth appearance in total. Wiffle. Was signed to the professional roster this past offseason after being with the reserve team last year. Fane going along with it, but no one in the area, and it'll be the first goal kick of the match. Steven Ortiz, the 22-year-old from Columbia, to take the goal kick. Ortiz played in the Nicaraguan First Division, played in the Red Bulls Academy. 
Keene University, also fairly Dickinson, and still young. Only 10 goals scored in 17 matches for Flower City coming into this one. With, of those goals, three coming against Maryland, including a victory. That was their last win, 2-1 to one against the Bobcats on May 14th. Surprisingly, out of Flower City's two wins, they're against two of the better teams in the league with, of course, Maryland, as I mentioned, and also beating Chattanooga 1-0 all the way back in April. So Sakura Sporber, you can really just turn it on as Ortiz, pressured by Balagon. He has to send it out towards the old Bay Brigade, and Maryland will have a throw in front of the Flower City bench. I mean, Ben, we saw it in the Premier League earlier, Brentford beating Manchester United 4-0. No one was expecting that. Soccer is a sport where the unexpected can happen. Anything can happen. Sometimes you're going to bring your best game, and the other team just isn't really going to have what they need to do to get it done. Flower City not really an offensively powered team. Mason sends it in, but it's cleared out towards Andre Dees. He's trying to take it himself. He goes to Veracone as an outlet. And it is now with Colin Mueller. To Robert Williamson. Flower City also in the U.S. Open Cup played the MLS team from this area, D.C. United. They lost 3-0 but kept that match close until the end. So they've shown what they can do. They lost their manager early in the season, so it hasn't been easy. They do have three players making their debut today. Here's Dees. Andre Dees, and Felix Anon punches it wide. That's Noah Cavanaugh chasing it. Cavanaugh, veteran of Nisa's, played for LA Force and the Stars. This is first appearance for Flower City in the Nisa League. He's again. It's Nikai Kid to point. The Rochester Rhinos youth product. And then out for a Maryland goal kick. Going back to what I was saying earlier, Adam, this Flower City Union team is just They've been a team that's really struggled to put the ball in the back of the net. They've been shut out 11 times this season. Their past four losses have been shut out. So you have to expect they'd really like to get one in early, start attacking as soon as possible because it's almost like a kind of a monkey on their back right now that they can't get one in. It's been a while since they last played, going all the way back to July 24th, their last match, and that was the Independent Cup Final against New Jersey Alliance, one of the top amateur teams in the country. They did win 2-0. It's been... More than a month since their last professional match. That was on the 16th of July, where they lost to Chattanooga 5-0. Before that, they lost to Syracuse 4-0. Wivel tries one from deep. Oh, my! Drew Wivel, out of nowhere, puts the Bobcats up 1-0 in the seventh minute. His first goal of the season. Puts the Popcats on tap to start this one. What a way to get your first goal of the season, Adam, from really, like you said, out of nowhere. An absolutely perfect strike. Put it low and away where the goalie can't get to it. Doesn't really get much better than that, especially on a long shot. Really tough to get one in from that kind of distance. You kind of have to go really low on those kind of shots. Those are the most difficult ones to stop, and we saw right there. They couldn't get to it in time. What a shot. And just like that, Maryland in the lead, and just the... Seventh minute, Drew Wivel with the goal. And again, that is his first one of the That is. He plays in the midfield as Maryland already...
And so it will be Maryland possession. Here's Manny Gonzalez. Now Davey Mason. Gonzalez again. Maryland, when they've attacked, pretty much working through the left side, but this time controlling to the right. D sends it out, and it will be a throw-in for Maryland. City debut. Yes, he Motown alum of USL too. Maryland asking for the flag to be put up. It is. The officials today, the referee Belvere Cabrera Garcia, first assistant Patrick Slane, the second assistant Daniel Watkins, the fourth official is Ryan Trombetta. Looks like some issues here with Elijah Amo on the sideline. He's gonna got some stuff from the trainer, maybe bleeding a little bit from the mouth. Well, that doesn't look good. So Maryland will be a player down here for a few minutes. It's Davey Mason, now the Ayafane. And here is Drew Wivel. Manny Gonzalez to Yaya Fane and now Davey Mason. And a foul there on the near side and that'll be a yellow card. The first card shown of the match, it'll go to Colin Mueller. It's been a little chippy when these teams have Played in the past. And a yellow card here in the 15th minute. And Maryland goes back on the free kick. And... Bavir Cabrera Garcia will say they have to do it again. Still trying to work through some of these audio issues. Again, we apologize for that. As a offside there, Jocelyn Pasayan a few steps behind the defense, and he does not like that call.
to clean it up and hopefully now we have fixed all of the audio issues I think Ben should be able to be back now as here's Darwin Espinal luckily haven't missed much as it's towards Drew Wivel the goal scorer back in the seventh minute plays a 1-2 with Alvarado now Manny Gonzalez a lot of room on the near side for Davey Mason if Maryland can get him but they don't as Andre Dees took it away. Again, should be back from all the technical difficulties. So the one good thing about 11 sports is you all can let us know if something's going wrong. Here's Jordan Sailing. Sailing one of the pretty much every match Starters for Flower City. He's appeared in 15 now. Still in a van trying to evade Khalid Balagun. He does. Maryland forwards have looked aggressive so far. It's a good sign for them. I think in that last game, that was one of those things that kind of was part of the sluggishness. The forwards weren't too aggressive. They weren't getting to 50-50 balls, but today should be a different day for the Bobcats in that sense. And Elijah Amo now back in after a quick injury. He heads it out for a Flower City throw-in. That's big. Pretty much able to get at, through that with the man down. Weren't able to, didn't really have to experience much stress there. Ball just over the head of Khalid Balagun. It's to Robert Williamson. It's just his fourth start of the season. And Colton Bly, just 27 years old, the interim manager of Flower City. Just trying to figure out what's going to work for this team. When it comes to the table, they're not at all in a good spot. Only eight points with 17 matches played. But it's just the first season, so definitely a lot of space to improve from here. As Poseidon was looking for Espinal, just a little bit too much on it. And so it's out for a throw. Just out on the near side. Quinton Carey couldn't keep it in. Gonzalez pressured by Dees and also blows from the referee. It'll be a Maryland free kick. Ben and I have talked about at length the scoring issues this season for Flower City. The only player who has a goal in a Nisa match currently on the field for Flower City is Sunil Veracone. So they're going to have to find attack from somewhere. They already trail 1-0. Here's Davey Mason. Out to Alvarado. Maybe he was going to think about trying one like Drew Wivel did on his goal. Here's Amo a chance. Gonzalez tries it, and it's deflected wide of the net. That will be a corner kick for Maryland. That's a good decision by Gonzalez right there. The ball kind of in a spot at a little bit of an opening for a shot right there, but chances are when you put it from that kind of range with traffic in front, you're going to get a deflection for a corner. So now you give yourself a good opportunity to get one in here already with a one nothing lead. This could be big for the Bobcats if they can get a second one in. Maryland is without Brandon Clegg today, one of their top target men on corners, but Khalid Balagun, a newer addition to this team, well above six feet. Maybe they'll look for him. It's played towards the near post. It was Richard Forka who got the contact on it, and it will be a throw-in. Flower City Union players didn't like that one caught very much. Wivel. Towards Fane, and it's just punched out by Ortiz. Only as far, though, was Mason. Mason pass Mueller. 
Sends it in towards the far post. Too far. But Amo able to keep it in in the corner. Pisayan. Espinal flicked it forward and it is cleared out by Robert Williams and all the way up to Felix Anand. Maryland looking very dangerous so far. A couple of really close balls to the net right there. And those are the exact kind of balls you really want to put in the perfect spot where the goalie and the attacker kind of one-on-one -on -one there at the top because the ball gets through, then someone's there to back it up. And really you catch the goalie out of position sometimes like that. So you just want to get the ball in a, in a position right in between that 6 and the 18 there. It's always difficult for the goalie to make a decision or not to come out. Ball intended to Amo. It's headed out by Cavan only as far, though, as Andy Alvarado. His ball to Wivel, not a good one. It'll be a throw in. Not to mention, we've seen how many times Maryland's put one in via the header this year. They've shown to be pretty good at that, so if it's one of your strengths, go at it. And Maryland takes it away off the throw in. Not a good ball intended towards Poseidon, and here comes Dees forward. But Dees doesn't have it for long. Great defending from Davey Mason. Ball to Amo. And the flag up, he is off. Maryland bench erupts, as does the old Bay Brigade. Not happy with that call, but the official on the far side puts the flag up. Offside was Amo. And that looked prime for a, another chance. And even the result with the offside call, you really got to love the run Amo just made. He nearly perfectly timed it. I guess you can't say perfectly timed it now because he was off. He was called offsides, but perfectly timed run like that. The ball was there. Should have been a perfect chance for a Maryland score, so hopefully you're going to see some more of that from him. And also a very small bench today for Flower City Union. That's something that you have to notice as here's Balogun a chance. He is on. And he's sitting now Poseidon. Maryland just controlling possession. Fork along to Mason. And just kept it in, but went right to Dylan Avand. And not a good clearance there from Mortiz. It's right back. Well, through to Dees, but Forka tracking back is able to clean it up. And Felix Sedan just telling Richard Forka to calm things down as Flower City will now try and press. Espinal pushed to the ground from behind. Garcia says no call and Here's Quinton Carey. Vericone. And the only man with the goal this year in the Flower City lineup. Vericone sends it in. No trouble for Felix Anon. It's aggressive out there right now, Adam, but they're letting him play. So something to keep an eye on. We, are, we have seen one yellow card so far. That was to Colin Mueller of Flower City. There's Jocelyn Poseidon. A good first touch from Espinal. He's able to keep it with a ton of pressure on his back from Avand. Colin Mueller. Mueller went to Westchester University. Also played for Westchester United. Hey, 
Oh, and here's a chance. Quinton Carey, but Mason able to come back and take it away. Carey's had a few opportunities so far, but just hasn't been able to put it together in the final third. That's pretty much been the story all season long for Flower City. Jordan sailing with room, long towards Dees. And Mason able to keep Dees on his back. Mason has just been terrific back there so far, hasn't he, Ben? I mean, that's, that's terrific right there. He really just used his body to shield the ball from the attacker, and that allowed Anon really to just get there and get on top of the ball. So really nice play for them. There's a lot of contact he had to endure, but he kind of took him down with him, so... Really nice play by him. We've seen a lot of energy out of him today. He's really been winning those 50-50 balls. He's been aggressive. He's really just been able to kind of hold the defense down back there and keep it not, keep the pressure off and on a little bit. Here's Wivel. Mason's also joined the attack a number of times today. Maryland really pushing those fullbacks, Wivel and Mason, far up the pitch. They lead 1-0 here in the 28th as Espinal just whiffs it, but able to win it back with help from Jocelyn Pasayan. Gonzalez was looking for Balagun, but it went to Mueller. Here's Dees. Sailing. Mueller pressured by Espinal. Able to get out of it. A carry can't hold on. Here's Balagun. And a foul there on Balagun. Not the greatest with his feet, but you're not going to expect a player like him to be. More of a target man up top. Zone is going to score on a lot of headers. As he has already for Maryland. Since his return to the team. Had a brace in the Independent Cup. Amo now. Espinal. Sent in. Trying on a header. Amo! Off the crossbar and over. But the flag up offside. But what a chance there. Just tipped all around and eventually over the bar. But with the flag up, it would not have counted. I mean, what a chance. But that chance wouldn't have happened if it weren't for Andy Alvarado winning that 50-50 ball. And he forced a turnover in that middle zone, which set everything up for that Maryland attack right there. And that's what they've wanted to see out of this Maryland team. That's didn't, it's what we didn't see against Chattanooga. And now Maryland's kind of really picked it up and... The energy's back. Three games in seven days is really tough for this team, but now that they have some time off, a lot of energy coming from this Bobcats team, and it's shown on the field tonight. And a good crowd today definitely helps that too. Also, a few supporters from Flower City Union making the trek here to Maryland in their pink, purple, as lilac. I don't know. I'm not sure exactly what color it is, but I like them. I like the jerseys. You know, that's always great to see, Adam, though. The, you got to grow the game. Got to keep the fans coming. And we've kind of seen the improvement in the attendance, especially here this year, go up. So that's something that's really good for just a soccer fan overall. Absolutely. I was talking about that earlier this week over on the Maryland Bobcast, the podcast of the Maryland Bobcat supporters group, the Old Bay Brigade. Make sure to give that a listen every week over on the Rooster and the Villain Twitter page. You can find it. They're a great show. They provide a lot of entertainment. They're really funny guys. And really overall great to listen to. Good experience. I was talking there about how this community is really starting to embrace the Bobcats. Uh, here's a chance for Dees. We'll try a shot, but it goes right to Felix Anon. And he's going to save that 100 times out of 100. 
it's so important to kind of grow soccer in the community. This is this is the Maryland Soccer Plex we're playing right here. Sam Soccer, MSI, all these youth leagues playing here, kids who have dreams of playing professional soccer. It's really good for them to possibly get out here and see professional players do it. This is Maryland's only professional team, so why not a better place to do it than right here in Montgomery County, a very, very densely populated area here of Maryland. Yeah, absolutely, and a very historic stadium we've seen. You know, this was the home of the Washington Spirit of the NWSL for a while as a non-able to clean up a long ball. DC United has played an MLS game here. They've played a number of U.S. Open Cup matches here. This has been a field used for college matches, and it's good to see Maryland Bobcats really embrace it as their home, and the community of Boyds, Maryland, and the rest of Montgomery County, one of the biggest counties in the nation, really start to embrace this team. Yeah, and it's a great stadium, great field, and really good job by the whole Bobcats team, what they've done here, just kind of getting things together, how we've seen it change over the past year, and things have really shaped up in this stadium. It's a really great venue for this kind of event. Oh, yeah, and the grass is absolutely excellent. The grounds crew here at the Soccerplex, they do an incredible job. They win award after award. They replaced the grass about two months ago, and you can never tell at this moment that it is brand new. Here's Wivel. Sends a low arching corner in, or sorry, a low arching cross in, and cleared out. Mason had a chance, but here's Dees forward to carry. Anon all the way out, a little bit risky, but he sends it into the stands. And Anon will have to race back in towards the net. That's that's the definition of being the backbone of the defense right there. Anon coming all the way out of his cage, making a full beeline over to get to that ball. And that's what a leader of the team does. A leader will make plays like that. And, I mean, that's really been stuff like that. Flower City's attack so far really just counters. We haven't seen much sustained possession turned into offensive opportunities. But maybe with a chance here, a possession they'll try and control for a little bit as we have about 12 minutes to go until we hit 45. A good ball to Mueller. And... Out off the foot of Yaya Fane, sailing keeps it in the possession of Flower City. And it's all the way back to Steven Ortiz. Not a great ball, right to the chest of Mason. And Flower City now trying to press. Good ball to Manny Gonzalez. He sends it forward to Amo, it's a good one. Amo, a one-on-one -on -one with the keeper, and it's over the net. Taken to the ground was Amo. He wants a penalty, but it will just be a corner. Another good chance for the Bobcats, and they'll have another one waiting. It all started kind of from that good ball movement in Maryland's own final third. Uh, Dave Mason moving it over to Gonzalez, and that was a beautiful ball by Gonzalez there. Defender just able to get to it. But important for Maryland, we've seen them struggle in their own final third in a couple of other games. So it's good to see them when they do. Espinal sends it in, and it's headed right back out. That'll be a throw in. About 10 minutes to go until we hit 45. Bobcats lead 1 0. Seen one booking. It was a yellow card to Colin Mueller, the right back for Flower City. And we thank you all for watching the Nice League here on 11 Sports. This is the only Nice League match of the night. Tomorrow night, Syracuse Pulse will host Chattanooga. That at 7 p.m. in Syracuse. As Espinal, it's now Poseidon. Espinal again. Andy Alvarado. And crossed him, but head right out. And eventually it's a foul on Drew Wibble. It'll be a free kick. Bobcats back in action midweek on Wednesday. They go to the West Coast for the first time this year. They will play against Albion San Diego. That at 7 p.m. Eastern time, 4 p.m. Pacific. You can watch that. 
Along with every match here on 11 Sports as Poseidon takes it away. And he is taken to the ground. That'll be a Maryland free kick. Poseidon joining the attack a little bit more than normal today. And he looks to be down hurt after that rough challenge. He's a key player for this Bobcats team there. Captain. Poseidon's been one of those guys. He's been bringing the energy for this team like we just saw. That was a really great challenge. He's put on the ball. Just an aggressive play. Didn't use his arms. Didn't commit any foul. He was just simply used his strength in his body to kind of create a little bit of separation and get that Flower City guy off the ball and create a chance there. And he got a little bit tripped up. So we're just hoping he's okay at this point with that because that kind of energy is something that the rest of the team has been feeding off tonight and you want to keep that going. And it looks like he is okay, able to get up and walk it off. Manny Gonzalez and Darwin Espinal, the two standing over the ball. We can expect Espinal to be the one to take it. He is very dangerous in positions like this. It's a four-man wall from Flower City. Espinal goes short, tried to find Amo, was cleared out only as far as Wivel. So Maryland tried to be a little bit fancy on the free kick. They do still end up with the possession. I, I don't hate the idea. Don't hate it at all. I think they try to try to catch them off guard a little bit. Thought they might catch them sli uh, slipping a little bit, but good job by that Flower City defense to hold off and not let that one through. You can mix things up every once in a while as that last touch by Flower City. Maryland looking for another before we go to the half. That would be big. This team, Flower City, really, really struggled to score like we talked about to put them down till 2 0 before half could be just really crushing for them. That ball finds Almo. It's almost a 5-3-2 for Flower City with Noah Cavanaugh playing back, almost in a left wing back position. And really not much attack from them at all outside of the counter. You have to wonder if that's kind of because Maryland's been pushing some of their backs up, trying to get more guys up there, so they're feeling that they're just countering that essentially by kind of putting another guy back. And then when they do get possession, they got to send it up for a counter themselves. Not sure exactly if that's their exact game plan, but just a little thought on that. That's at least how they've been playing so far. We'll see if they change at all at the half as they do trail now as that ball played towards Cavanaugh, but too much on it. It'll be a Maryland throw. Pretty much all of Flower City's attacks have come through this near side of the pitch. All of the fans here at the Soccer Plex on the Near side, filling up the stands. A good crowd, number of youth teams out supporting. Along with the Old Bay Brigade with their drums situated behind the Flower City bench, trying to get into the heads of the opposition. One day the hopes are that other side is going to be filled up too. Yeah, that's the goal one day. One step at a time, Adam. Balogun tied up and it's to Robert Williamson. Williamson, a Buffalo State alum, played for FC Buffalo in the NPSL. The Harrisburg Heat in the MASL. As here is Darwin Espinal through to Amo. Amo a chance, tried to chip it. But Ortiz just able to stop it and he is absolutely livid at his defense. And he should be. Amo ran three right through there. It's very fortunate to get a hand on coming all the way out and to get a piece of it. And would have been a sure goal for Maryland right there, but really nice play by Ortiz to keep it out. And Maryland knocking on the door for another as we're into the 40s. Besian not on the same page as Espinal. And here's Andre Deese. 
He's played at UCF and then Cal State Northridge in high school. Played for Southern States in the MPSL. Was a big part of them qualifying for the U.S. Open Cup. He has one assist this year. This is his 16th match, his 13th start. Richard Forca. It finds its way to Amo. The best ball from Fane, but it does make its way to Wivel. With Varicone pressuring, here comes Wivel all the way forward. Now Balogun, chip forward to Wivel. To Aspinall, and oh, it's just into the side of the net, but the wrong side. And it's still just 1-0 Maryland. Wivel had a chance for a brace, tried to dish it off to Aspinall, and he just couldn't find the net. I think that's just one too many passes right there. Wivel had a had an opportunity right there, and he gave it over to Espinal, but the pass just a little bit too far out in front of him, and it wasn't really easy for him to handle. That's why he got wasn't able to get it to that far post. And you got to think at this point, it's any moment Maryland will find their second goal. Opportunity after opportunity. Ideally, you want to get one in right here before the half. Well, you got this momentum going for you. Robert Williamson. Barracone looking forward. Bafane steps in front of it. And a foul there on Pisayan. So it'll be a free kick here for Flower City. Pisayan not happy with it. And he will see a yellow card. I'm a little bit surprised by that one. It, it almost seemed kind of like an advantage was almost being played for Flower City right there. So I thought the call was going to be going against Flower City, but they elected to give him the ball back there. So I think there's a lot of unhappy people on both sides of this call. Maryland, Pasayan obviously showing his displeasure right there, now picking up a yellow card. But Flower City had a really a decent chance right there before they blew the whistle, so... You have to feel they'd be frustrated with that as well. Yeah, and again, that a yellow card for Pisayan, his fourth of the season. And the free kick here for Flower City, taken by Kavanaugh towards the far post. Amo reels it in. Maryland looking for one last attack before the half ends. As a foul on Amo, it'll be a free kick at the center line. Wivel looking to hurry it up. Goes long to Mason. D's able to control. Up to sailing. Fane working back, wins it. Oh, and a beautiful ball there from Mason. Just too hard of a touch. It's out for a throw. Power City was trying to play it quick with Colin Mueller with the other ball coming in from the bench, but the official will say he has to re-throw it in, and it goes back to a Van. Fourth official shows one minute of at a time. Doesn't seem like a lot considering a goal and the other stoppages that we have had, but just one minute. Here's Amo. In towards the middle, it's Balogun. Balogun turns with it, but can't get enough power. Here's Espinal. And it's Flower City. Dees 
Andre Dees Jr. Goes to the other side, but Andy Alvarado says no, and Manny Gonzalez sent to the ground. Maryland will have one more chance before the half ends. Right about 55 seconds as Balagun and Espinal can't connect. Veracone forward. And he's sent to the ground by Pasayan, who already has a yellow card. And a little bit of a lazy tackle there from Pasayan. Probably not enough for a second yellow, but a little bit dangerous for sure. It's not a tackle that you want to make when you already have been put in the books, as we're now about a minute and 20 into the one minute shown, and this could be the last ball of the half. It's Robert Williamson. No Cavanaugh. And now about a minute and 40 seconds in. Still Flower City with possession. Mason heads it out. The sign heads it up and Fane goes out. It's Veracone. And finally sent all the way out. By Richard Forca, and that'll do it for half number one. The Maryland Bobcats lead Flower City Union by a score of 1-0. Ben, before we get a break, your thoughts on the first half? Uh, really good first half, especially offensively for Maryland. A little bit surprising that they only got one going. Flower City Union, pretty fortunate that some of those, a couple of those balls didn't go Maryland's way. Uh, a little bit of a, contra not say controversial, but a close offsides call on the ball to Amo. We've seen a lot of energy from Amo, especially. He's been really making his way through, getting a lot of through balls, and I think we wouldn't be really surprised if we see him get one in the back of the net. But just high energy from this Maryland team. They've really put the pressure on Flower City in here early, so that's just something that they'll have to keep going in the second half. They really got them in the position that they want them right now, and it's just all about capitalizing them and, essentially finishing them off. Yeah, and we, again, we apologize for those audio issues earlier in the half, but all good towards the end. And we thank you all so much for watching the Maryland Bobcats and Flower City Union here on 11 Sports. We'll be back in about 14 minutes.
Half number two now between the Maryland Bobcats and Flower City Union. I'm Adam Gawkin. Ben Strober beside me and Ben. After 45, the Bobcats lead 1-0. What do they have to do to make sure they get these three points? Just keep putting the pressure on. I mean, we saw, especially towards the end of the second half, Maryland was knocking on the door, and they just barely couldn't get in. The door was open slightly. They were reaching their hand and trying to get, grab the knob themselves, but they couldn't just quite get the ball in the back of the net. So just keep putting the pressure on, and once they finally get one back in, if they can get to a 2-0 new, uh, new lead, that'll really be big for them going forward, trying to put this Flower City Union team away that, you know, Lower energy than we've seen from Maryland today. They struggle offensively, so another big goal if you just keep the pressure on them is offensively. It's going to be really tough for them to do anything and come back. Yeah, just 1-0 for Maryland, but the way that the first half went definitely could have been much more lopsided. Maryland, though, has had a bit of an issue in the past of kind of losing games in which they really should have won or just getting draws when they should have gotten victories. So they got to hold on here, definitely... You know, go for another goal. And if they can do that, you know, they put themselves in a good chance. 45 minutes to go. The Bobcats looking to win their third straight home match. They'll be going from left to right, and they're all yellows. And we are underway for half number two. Flower City in the purple shirts and black shorts going right to left. You really said it best, Adam. you got to keep your foot on the gas if you're Maryland. No, no need to get conservative yet. We're only in... In the 45th minute now, plenty of time, plenty of time to get a couple more on the board before then you maybe start dropping back and kind of trying to prevent a little bit. There's no defense better than a good offense. So if you can get another goal in or even another two, you know, then you know don't have to worry as much as one goal, of course, wouldn't tie it. It's pretty simple math. Here's Richard Forka. He had a pretty good first half. Goes all the way to Steven Ortiz, who has had a insanely busy first half for Flower City. Having to make save after save, seeing opportunity after opportunity. Here's an opportunity for Maryland. It's to Amo. A little bit too much on it towards Balagon, and Maryland will slow it down a little bit. Played back in towards the far post. Alvarado keeps it with Maryland. It's now Wivel who sends it in. Amo the header, but not enough on it. Easy for Ortiz. Goes fast with it. Here's Dees, and Fane wins it back to Maryland. Here's Davey Mason. Darwin Espinal. See why Ortiz has been so busy. It seems like... Every time they finally get possession, they seem to give it right back to Maryland, and they're constantly in a position where Ortiz has to be ready for a shot at the cage. Well, Maryland's one goal coming on, a long shot as Amo taken down from behind by Grant Michaels. Gonzalez goes short with the free kick to Amo. Wivel. Amo again, finds its way to Alvarado, Amo, right to Ortiz. Amo's been good so far today, he has four goals on the season, looking for his fifth. No substitutions from either side yet. As Espinal takes it away. He's looking for Balagun, didn't get there though. Robert Williamson and Dylan Avand. Dees tripped up Jocelyn Pasayan, who is down on the ground yet again. And it's a Maryland free kick. Pasayan just getting absolutely knocked around. Non stop. Typically what happens when you play as aggressive as he's been playing. Maryland tried to play it quick, but they were a little bit too quick. They'll have to go again. Here's Espinal. 
Alagun sends it up into the air, and it's out for a corner kick. Here you go. If you're Maryland, this is where you got to get one in right here. You've been knocking at the door for the past 15 or minutes so, and no better opportunity right now than on the corner kick. Espinal sends it in towards the front post. It's headed out by Michaels. And here's Dees. Dees and Carey. It's now Carey. Looking back for Dees out off of Poseidon. And it's a corner kick here for Flower City. And a chance for the visiting side. Could be a big swing in momentum right there. Maryland been putting an immense amount of pressure on that Flower City cage. And you just get a corner. And now, what, we're about 15 seconds later here. And now Flower City is getting a corner of their own. Only down by one goal. About Obviously, one goal coming in. Here's the equalizer. About five and a half minutes here in it to half number two. Maryland looking pretty dominant as they were in the first half as that ball right to Felix Anan, who goes fast with it to Elijah Amo. And Amo past Dees. He's taken to the ground. That'll be a yellow card for sure on Andre Dees. And looks like Amo is okay. So the second yellow card shown to a Flower City player in this match. The first was to Colin Mueller. Jocelyn Poseidon has a yellow for Maryland. It's been an aggressive game, Adam. And that's what you expect when this is the fourth time these teams have played this year. And it's been pretty chippy when they've played in the past. On intended to Balogun. Physical down there. It ends up with Alvarado. Amo now. Oh, what a diving stop by Steven Ortiz. A good shot there from Amo looking for the far corner. Ortiz said no, and it'll be a corner kick. I was about ready to have my jaw drop. That was almost a nearly perfect shot. Couldn't get really much better than that. Great save. Espinal, in swinging corner, punched out by Ortiz. Played back in towards the mixer, and Ortiz will clean it up. Tries to go with the quick punt, but it's right at Jocelyn Poseidon. And that's kind of how this game has been. An opportunity for Maryland. Ortiz gets it and then gives it right back away. Here's Balogun off the post. Another chance for Maryland. Just misses. And it'll be a goal kick. Looks like Maryland getting ready to make a substitution. That'll be the first of the match. And that substitution will have to wait. It'll be Joseph Boone coming in for Khalid Balagun. As here's Amo is trying to work past Sailing. Does stay with Maryland. Here's Mason. Poseidon. Mason again. Here's Richard Forca. And not a good touch there from Drew Wivel. Just couldn't control it. And it's out for a throw. All the way back to Ortiz. Balagun will try and pressure. Clear the tank as he's about to be subbed out. Good job from Amo to go up and win the header. Here's Manny Gonzalez. To Davey Mason. Aspinall, the one-two with Mason. Crossed in and headed out by Kavanaugh. Only as far as Wivel who tries one. Or sorry, that was Gonzalez. Not Wivel. Here's Balagon. Still Balagon. A shot! 
And a goal for Maryland. It's Darwin Espinal. An incredible assist from Khalid Balagun. Espinal buries it, and it's 2-0 Maryland. Doesn't really get much better moving the ball than the way Maryland did it right there. We saw a couple of one-twos. You get the ball in the box, really anything that can happen, all it takes is one simple touch pass, and what a finish by Espinal. Just put the ball to that far post. Ortiz, been busy all night long, and he's done a pretty good job keeping Maryland off the board, but that shot was too good, too far and away, and really can't do much better than that, and that's a big goal for this Maryland team. They've been really knocking on the door for so long, and to finally get one in here, that's got to be a crushing one for Flower City Union, but big one here for Maryland. And it is the sixth goal of the season for Darwin Espinal. He's now tied for second in the Golden Boot leaderboard with Taylor Gray and Tony Lopez, but still very far behind first place. Marcus Naglestad, who has 13 goals. Those men in at second have six. And Khalid Balagun, who had the assist and an incredible one, pretty much got most of the goal by himself, comes out Joseph Boone in. Boone making his 11th appearance of the season. It's a nice way to end your day. Help your team out, make a big play. Absolutely. And I'm looking for Boone. Good job there by Robert Williamson to get in front of it and win the ball for Flower City, who's going to try and control possession here. Now trailing by two. Maryland's first goal was in the seventh minute there. Second goal in the 54th, so both coming early in the halves. Uh, they'd love another. And won six to one the last time they played here at the Soccerplex, Maryland did. Maryland won one nil the first time these teams played in Rochester, lost two one the second time. Mason, Espinal, Looking for a brace, it's back to Mason. Now Boone! Joseph Boone gets on the board, his second goal of the season, and there it is, the Bobcats lead 3-0. One man comes out, the next man up, Joseph Boone. That's exactly what you're supposed to do. You come into the game to make plays just like that. Really perfectly executed by the Bobcats going down on the counter and just once again, getting the ball back in the middle, really anything can happen, and that's just a beautiful strike by Boone. Really couldn't put any put it any better than that. And Boone continues his torment on this Flower City Union team. Remember, we saw him score against them back on May 14th and, as well. And they are having fun here at the Plex. The old Bay Brigade making noise along with all the fans in attendance tonight. As the Bobcats now lead 3-0. Two goals in just a few minutes. Joseph Boone, after coming on, puts one in just after the man he came on for. Klee Balagun had a key assist. He didn't want the Bobcats to come out conservative this half, and they exactly did the opposite of being conservative so far. Two goals in about a two-minute span. I mean, what more could you ask out of your attacking guys? And they want another. Here's Amo. Amo dishes it off, and it's a brace for Joseph Boone. Two goals for Joseph Boone in a span of minutes after coming on as a substitute. And it's 4-0 Maryland in the 58th. Dance on him, Joseph Boone. <laughs> He's doing the gritty. Doing the gritty, and what a perfect celebration to cap off. You come into the game, into the 56th minute, and you got two goals in literally a one minute span. That's talk about being the substitute of the day or maybe substitute of the year. And Maryland has put themselves, they're in full throttle right now. Four nil, the Bobcats now lead. And they will make a few substitutions with Bernardo Mahano coming on and Jocelyn Pasayan off. This will be the 12th appearance for Mahano. And Flower City now looks very defeated after 
giving up three goals in the first 14 minutes of this second half. All right, three goals in about 14 minutes after really a good job of keeping it out in the first half they did. I mean, they gave up a goal in the seventh minute, but after that, the remaining about 38, they were able to be pretty much clean, but eventually Maryland just fights through. And talk about Joseph Boone's goal right there, but look at the man coming off right there, Amo, and what a day he's had for this Bobcats team, getting some well-deserved rest, and he really made the play right there. He got to that ball that came down the inside. He was able to get past the defense and really just dish it off, but Amo played so physically today, just trying to win those 50-50 balls, and we saw him get a lot of chances where he'd go through and the ball be played into him, and it's a really good job by him today and just setting up his teammates and making the play for the next man up. Well, here's Boone. Boone wants a hat trick. Oh, my goodness. That one just a little bit wide to the left. He was close. And another substitution for Maryland. Sam Solomon coming on for Elijah Amo. And Sam Solomon, it's a guy who you know a little bit, Ben. I mean, yeah, well, in my day job over at Jersey Mike Subs, over in Gaithersburg, Maryland, Sam Solomon's almost a regular customer. He's come in there a couple of times now. He enjoys to get a giant club sub in. <laughs> Maybe I'll ask him after the game if that's what fuels him for things like this. But was talking to him a little bit. He said uh, that they were really looking to bounce back from the last game because he said they were really slow, they were really sluggish, and they were just tired. So like we kind of talked about earlier today, Maryland's really bounced back from that. The energy's been there, and... I guess that must have been a point of emphasis in practice and training this week. It sounds like that was the thing. They know they were slow. They know they were beat up. And today they've came out full fire. Oh, boy, are they on full throttle right now. 4-0 the lead over Flower City. Things have escalated really quickly. And Flower City just trying to calm things down after three goals in a span of about four minutes. And Maryland wants another. Here is Boone. Oh, the flag up. He's off. And the Maryland crowd does not like that. They don't care if they're already up 4-0. They want to make it 10. It's a tough position to be in right now if you're Flower City. To give up three goals in about a four-minute span now down 4 nothing. It's just really hurts the demeanor of the team at this point. You're almost, you know, you're 61 in, minutes into the game. You basically got 30 minutes left to make up four goals. So... Start to feel out of it a little bit. We've seen passes that haven't been so good, just like that one. Oh, Maryland just looks, looks like they're playing games right now with Flower City as that's out on to the Maryland bench for a Maryland throw-in. And unfortunately for Flower City, games like this, it's not anything new. If you go back in their schedule, 5-0, 4-0, 3-0, 5-1, 3-0, 3-0, 6-1. That's games that they've lost. They're down 4-0 here, so unfortunately for them, this is the normal. And not easy in their first year. But Maryland, of course, not going to give it to them at all or make things easier. Also, the captain's armband has been given to Yaya Fane now as Jocelyn Basayan came off. That's Fane with it right now. Have to check the match center from those games. We have to wonder if how many of those games really the other team kind of just started to pour it on them late once they kind of wear down this Flower City team and really get them dejected. Boom! Just over the bar. Two substitutes getting ready to come on for Flower City. Jay Lee and Michael Cunningham. Both will be, I'm sorry, Cunningham will be making his debut. Andre D's off for Flower City. Jay Lee does have a goal this year. Also an assist, so Maryland open that maybe he can, I'm sorry, Flower City open that maybe he can bring some offense as it is Robert Williamson coming off for Michael Cunningham. And Maryland also Got him ready to make a few substitutions, but they will have to wait. It'll be Brandon Clegg and Mo Alawine on. As Ortiz got him ready to take the goal kick. Maryland leads 4-0 here in the 64th minute. Adam, there's something to be said about the body language of the Flower City team as you saw those substitutes coming off. And 
even just noticing in the pregame, the Bobcats pregame compared to Flower City, you know, Flower City, a lot less organized, a lot much, not, things weren't really team oriented as much as we've seen on the Bobcats side, so potentially the chemistry just really isn't as much there as this Bobcats team, and it's not, I'm not saying that the Flower City isn't, like, is disinterested in it by any means or not as interested, but there's something to be said about body language when it comes to a team's demeanor and how hard they'll play. Absolutely. And, you know, all those things from pre-match definitely do end up translating onto the field as Varicone tries when it just trickles wide to the left out, though, for a corner. And that's kind of some of the differences that we've seen from last year to this year with Maryland, with Sylvan Rostello taking the reins as the manager. Organization is so important. And it's not easy for Flower City. You know, when you have Colton Bly, who came in not expecting to be a professional coach or, you know, mainly a youth coach. 27 years old and thrown into a spot like this. It's not easy. Corner coming in. It's a chance. An incredible stop from Anand. Another try. Stopped again. Felix Anand keeps the shutout on. But Flower City will have another chance. It's another corner this time from the far side of the pitch. Man. Not much action for Anand in a, in a while now because of how good Maryland's been on offense. Like you said earlier, the best the best defense is a good offense, but now that Maryland defense really does have to showcase itself a little bit. The corner short that time. It was sent in and cleared out by Maryland, eventually out for Michael Cunningham, and Maryland will make two substitutions. Looks like they will come on now, or maybe they're going to wait a little bit. Looks like they are going to come on now it will be Brandon Clegg and Mo Alawine on Yaya Fane and Manny Gonzalez off and so the captain's armband does change again this time goes on to Richard Forca's left arm and Alawine on making his seventh appearance of the season Clegg on making his 14th appearance. This is the only match he has not started. And the Bobcats have now used all five of their substitutions. Here's Sam Solomon. Brandon Clegg, his first touch. It's a good pass to Davey Mason. Bernardo Mahano, one of the substitutes on. Been pretty quiet so far, but a good ball there to Sam Solomon Ortiz. Able to get there first and control it. That out in front of the fourth official for a Flower City throw. And that. That just stays in. Not sure how, but it did on the sideline. Alawine gets it back as possession back and forth. And again, back to Flower City. Kavanaugh takes the throw fast to Vericone. Good movement. It's Carey. Him and Wivel fighting. Here's Bernardo Mahano. And Forca sends it way forward. Grant Michaels couldn't control it, and it's a throw in. Flower City was asking for a handball on Joseph Boo, and as he was fighting for it, when the ball was played forward, it looked to me like it did hit his hand. But Balvio Cabrera Garcia did not see, and so they did play on. And eventually it ends up with. Maryland controlling possession. Flower City getting ready to make another substitution. As Clegg stepping forward with it. Plays it through to Mason. And a good job there to slide it away by Jay Lee. His first moment of the match. Substitution now for Flower City. Coming on is... Marcus Micheletti, number 24. 
from Bristol, Rhode Island. Played for the University of Rhode Island and helped bring them to an 8 championship. It's the fourth substitution for Flower City and will most likely be their last. I don't think they have anyone available outside of a backup keeper. Here's Alvarado. Was looking for Wivel. It does get to Wivel. And Wivel was trying to be a little bit fancy. Lost it, but does win it back. Here's Boone. Boone keeps it in. Sends it in towards the middle. But it's out, and here's Cunningham. Farrakhan. Looking long to Lee and on all the way out. They'll control it and give it to Clegg as he's pressured by Lee. By the way, off for Flower City was Colin Mueller on the Micheletti substitution. Not coming in the 68th minute. David Mason to throw it in. So we're about 20 minutes away. On the scoreboard it says Maryland has 20 shots so far in this match. That is incredible. 20 shots. And they lead 4-0. It was really about time where Maryland finally broke through the way they did. And they almost did in a way we didn't expect them to. We kind of thought they would just get one in here and there in those minutes that they were just getting close. But then they just broke through and they really caught fire. Joseph Boone is out there playing like his head is on fire. And at this point, it's kind of how many can you put in? We're already up 4 0. Maybe we'll try and save the legs a little bit before a West Coast trip. Heading out to beautiful San Diego for a match against Albion on the 17th. As here is Boone for to Solomon. Oh, we just couldn't connect. And it's a goal kick. Solomon with three goals on the season and a chance for a fourth. Boone, after scoring two goals, after coming on, trying to add an assist to his name. A long ball towards Cunningham. I wonder how many people could say they had three points in a span of 15 minutes. Probably not many. And Boone still pressuring and... That's a foul on Grant Michaels from Boone. Just got him in the back of the foot. And it is a yellow card shown to Joseph Boone. He's not very happy with it. And Michaels will take the free kick here as we go into the 73rd minute. I'll take a picture of that though. All towards Carey. Espinal stops it from getting further forward. Here's Varicone. Lee. Our city looking a bit promising as that one over the crossbar and the attack over. Maryland slowed it down a little bit here in the past few minutes after scoring three in just a few minutes of work. As here's Drew Wivel. 
Little bit of a miscommunication. Mo Alawan thrown to the ground by Jordan Salen. And it'll be a free kick. There's a big sailing, cheering section. The old Bay Brigade giving sailing some words. I think it doesn't look like you have shin guards on. And a little bit of back and forth. All fun between the two fan bases. As Vericone blocks it with his arm, the official will say. And it's a handball and a free kick for Maryland. Cabrera Garcia still talking with Veracone. He's not happy with the call, so Forca will have to go again on the free kick. You have to imagine that some of these Flower City Union players are just frustrated from how the game has been overall and really in an overarching uh, way their whole season's been. Yeah, not easy for them there. Goal differential now minus 37 as here's Solomon just couldn't get a good touch on it. And it's rolled out to Kavanaugh. Forward towards Cunningham, Clegg heads it out. Just under 15 minutes to go now until we reach 90. Alwine fouled by Cunningham is making his Flower City debut. And Bobcats have made all five of their substitutions. Sam Solomon, Demore Alwine, Joseph Boone, Bernardo Mahano, and Brandon Clegg coming on. Jocelyn Pasayan, Elijah Amo, Yaya Fane, Manny Gonzalez, and Clay Balagun all coming off. Boone, Espinal, and it's another for Maryland. Darwin Espinal gets his brace. It's 5-0 in the 77th. And for Flower City, it just never ends. One of the worst positions you can be in right now is those guys on the field for Flower City Union. It just seems like you got a black cloud over your head and the storm just won't stop. And just when you thought Maryland would start getting a little bit more conservative, trying to um, preserve themselves a little bit moving forward, they put it right down their throat again. And for Darwin Espinal, his now seventh goal of the season, he's now in sole possession of second place in the Golden Boot race. Although still a long way from first, and Marcus Nagelstad, who has 13. Cross towards the far post. It makes its way to Cunningham. Played in. Vericone has a chance. Still Vericone. A good pass to Cunningham. Working in on Wivel. A good defense. Here's Kavanaugh. Easy for an on. Bobcats won by five. The first time these teams played here at Marine Hendricks Field. That Final score, 6-1. to one. Looking for a shutout here. They lead 5-0. Flower City trying to just not have one of their losses be a shutout at this point. Like I said earlier, their past four have been shutouts. So getting in the territory of a fifth shutout in a row for a loss-wise. Played it on the ground. All the way through, it's Espinal. Thought maybe Boone could have had a chance for a hat trick on it. He let it go all the way through. It's a good pass from Davy Mason. Looked like uh, two guys could have had to play on it potentially. At least. And Maryland will try and reset, go for another. Demora Allawine. Here's Drew Wivel. And Sam Solomon. 
Solomon plays it in. It's loose in the area. Mahano turns, shoots, and it finds the back of the net. Although the flag up. It deflected off of Joseph Boone, who was in an offside position. That closed to a sixth. It's a 5 nothing game, Adam, but the crowd's still, still very much into it, very much into this game. They were ready to explode for that goal right there, but what more can you say about the way the crowd's been today and the players kind of fed off that energy? Oh, yeah, the old Bay Brigade still banging those drums on 90 minutes long on their feet. If you'd like to join them for the next Maryland Bobcats home game, go to MarylandBobcatsFC.com for tickets that on August 27th, two weeks from today, against Chattanooga FC. The Bobcats trying to break their home attendance record. Make sure to come out and support Maryland's only professional soccer team. That's a really big game to break that kind of record. Yeah, against the top team in the East. It'll be a big match for both sides. Here's Cavanaugh. Cunningham. As we're in the 80th minute. Alawine takes it away. He was looking forward towards Mahano. It's now Cavanaugh. Way too much on that cross. Maybe just a little bit of frustration taken out there by Noah Cavanaugh. And it's a Maryland goal kick. Looks like Flower City getting ready to make a substitution. Andrea Pergoni. The Italian getting ready to come on as Anon goes short with the goal kick. Solomon turns with it. Here's Wivel. Alvarado. And Clegg splits a double. Now goes to Davy Mason. All towards Solomon. He'll try one and maybe should have sent it to a teammate. But up 5 0. I guess everyone just wants a goal of their own. Not a good pass. It goes right to Drew Wivel. Another careless turnover there from Flower City. Solomon was looking for the one-touch pass to Wivel. Out on the near sideline, and Flower City will make the substitution. Grant Michaels coming off. Andrea Pergoni coming on. He'll be making his third appearance of the season. And Pergroni, born and raised in Rome, Italy. Fluent in three languages, Italian, English, and Spanish, and also knows some Portuguese. Alvarado up to Wivel. Boone turns with it. Through to Solomon, and I think he thinks he was offside. I'll just let it go through. And again, Flower City gives it back to Maryland. At this point, it doesn't even feel like Flower City's trying to control possession once they get the ball. They're just trying to not allow any more goals, not even try and get one of their own, it feels like almost. Right, Ben? I mean, it's been domination all day long possession-wise for Maryland, so 
especially when they fell behind in a 5 nothing hole. It really kind of takes away your will to even try to possess the ball because possessing the ball and moving it across the field does require a bit of energy. And Flower City Union just quite really isn't in it anymore. So they've kind of dropped off a little bit. They're trying to go for more of the counterattack. But that's something they've been doing all night long. So not really a bit of a surprise by that. And just being able to control the midfield, control possession, so important and kind of wearing the other team down. And that's probably why Maryland's been able to break through, especially in the second half. Just putting so much pressure on that Flower City defense, it, it really makes it difficult. They get tired. Those Maryland offensive players continue to have a lot of energy and they continue to preserve themselves. And it really showed when they broke through for that three-goal spur in about five minutes. Well, they're looking for another ball intended towards Solomon. Played back out here sailing. Goes short to Cavanaugh. And too weak on that pass. Espinal takes it away. It's Mahano. Joseph Boone. Was a brace today. And the Avarado. Wivel chips it forward. Here's Boone, sends it in, and Ortiz able to hold on. Love the emotion of Boone there. He is actually really frustrated with himself. After the, he thought he could have made a better ball, and then he's had such a fantastic day already, but always wanting the best, always wanting to get better, always wanting to put the best version of himself out there, and he's really done just that tonight. Yeah, the youngster, the Maryland native, has had an excellent match, Boone. Went to Bishop McNamara High School, was named first and second team all WCA. You see in his time there. Into the 87th minute. Brandon Clegg. Gives it over to Alwine. That's the first match all season. Clegg has not gotten the start in. After so many matches and so little time, just needed a little bit of, you know, time to refresh before eventually getting in, as here is Wivel. Wivel sends it in on the ground. It gets its way all the way through and just misses wide to the left. Sam Solomon with the chance. Just couldn't send it in. And a We Won Six chant breaks out in the Maryland crowd. It's an important win for this Maryland team moving forward, going taking on the Albion next week, and then getting a crack at Bay Cities again. That was a team that last time they played them here at home, it just Really, it was one of those games where Maryland just didn't have it. They were lackadaisical with their passes. They were turning the ball over a lot. But if they play the way they did tonight, I think we'd see a very different game. So they're going to get another crack at them before, of course, big game against Chattanooga at home. So a lot of momentum can be built from today's win. Absolutely. Ragoni. Boone wins it back. Everyone from NISA League office would like to thank Adam for his excellent work in covering the Maryland Bobcats broadcast and wish him the best of luck at Syracuse University and beyond. So as a good friend of you, Adam, I want to also thank you as well for bringing me out here and just congratulate you on what you've done here with the Bobcats. And the youngest pro broadcaster, 17 years old, you're not even 18 yet, just kind of Really, it's take it all in for yourself, and how are you feeling in this moment? Well, thank you, Ben, and uh, thank you to everyone uh, at the league office, you know, Ron Gilmore, John Proch, everyone involved in NISA for, you know, creating this league, giving an opportunity for a team like the Bobcats to be a part of it, and uh, to the Bobcats for giving me 
this chance to, as you said, be the youngest professional sports broadcaster in uh, the country. And, yeah, I will be going to Syracuse University in the fall. So, unfortunately, as you said, this will be my last match. And we're not yet over. Still have a few minutes left until we hit 90 and then a little bit more added time then. But I can't thank everyone enough for all of your support for tuning in for this match and every other one. Here's Al Wan. Drew Wivel. Still Wivel. And finally, it's taken away. A good job by Michael Cunningham. One of the new additions to this Flower City team. And oh, Quinn and Carey looks like he maybe pulled something on the near sideline. As he was trying to take it away. Holding his hamstring. And Valvira Cabrera Garcia will blow the whistle. And never looks good. He went in for the tackle with his right leg and just kept it out straight. Maybe a cramp, but holding that right hamstring. That never looks good. And Cabrera Garcia will stop playing. Make sure that Quinton Carey is okay. Carey's had a pretty good match so far today. A few chances on the offensive end. As we have now hit 90 minutes. No indication from the fourth official of how much added time we will see as he was busy dealing with Carey, who now is back up standing and looks to be okay. Maybe that was just a cramp. It'll be a drop ball as Cabrera Garcia stopped the play. And Maryland will take it. Again, no indication of out of time yet, fourth official now makes his way over the board. Here's Clegg. And two minutes of added time indicated, even with the four goals in this half. I guess with the 5 0 score, just two minutes is all that we need. Here's Sailing. Quick one, two, it's sailing again. And now Cunningham. Flower City trying to break this shutout as the cross played in, sent back out, this time for a corner kick. And now I'm a little frustrated. He thought that Cunningham took the ball out before crossing it in. As we're about a minute and a half into this two minutes show of added time, so could be done at any minute now after this attack. Cross played in towards the middle. It gets its way through. Pogroni a chance. Anon out of the net. It's wide open, but Mahano clears it out up to Boone. Sam Solomon streaking up the near side of the pitch. It's Darwin Espinal, and he's kicked in the back of the foot. Uh, it'll be a foul, a free kick, and a yellow card shown to Pogroni. And so we're now over two minutes. So this next touch could be the last. Brandon Clegg standing over it. And that will do it. What a performance today here in Boyd's by the Maryland Bobcats. They beat Flower City Union by a score of 5-0. Two goals from Joseph Boone, two from Darwin Espinal, and one from Drew Wivel. The Bobcats bounce back from a 3-0 loss in their last performance. Get back into the win column. And they are now.